Hello everyone. This is Dr. S. R. Pagari from K. J. Sumaya College of Arts, Commerce and Science. And in this session of Cost and Works Accounting, today we will be discussing on methods of cost classification, especially on the basis of elements, functions and variability. So, let's start with the presentation. Cost is classified and analyzed according to the specific needs for the purpose of managerial control and decision making. So, these are the two important tools required for cost classification that is for the purpose of managerial control and for decision making. Generally cost is classified on various basis on the basis of elements, functions, behavior, controllability, normality, period or time, association, investment and relevancy. So first let's see classification of cost on the basis of elements. Material, labor and expenses are the three important elements of cost. So now let's see what is material cost. The cost of commodities other than fixed assets introduced into products or consumed in the operation of an organization is termed as material cost. Material cost may be either direct material cost or indirect material cost. Now let's see what is direct material cost. It is that cost which directly enters into and forms a part of the production cost such as timber in furniture, yarn in cloth manufacturing, rubber in tire making, etc. Indirect material cost. It is that cost of material which does not form part of the final product cost directly, but it helps the production such as lubricant oil, grease, cotton waste, etc. needed for operating and maintaining plant and machinery. Let's see the second important element of cost that is labor cost. This is the cost of remuneration paid to the employees of the organization such as wages, salary, bonus, commission, etc. Labor cost may be either direct labor cost or indirect labor cost. What is direct labor cost? Direct labor cost is the cost which is needed directly for the operation of plant and machinery such as carpenters for furniture making, weavers for textiles, etc. Direct labor cost is also known as direct wages. Indirect labor cost, when the cost of labor is not directly engaged in the operation, but needed to help the production, such production labor cost is known as indirect labor cost. Example, salary and wages paid to foremen, watchmen, storekeepers and inspectors. Expenses. The term expenses denotes the cost of services provided to the business organization such as freight on purchase of raw material, excise duty, etc. Expenses may be either direct expenses or indirect expenses. Direct expenses costs other than materials or wages which are incurred for a specific product or a sellable service is known as direct expenses. They form a part of prime cost. Direct expenses are also known as chargeable expenses or productive expenses. Indirect expenses. The expenses which are not identified directly with a particular unit or cost center are known as indirect expenses. All indirect expenses are called as overheads. That is the aggregate of indirect material, indirect labor and indirect expenses are known as overheads. For example, factory overheads, office overheads, selling and distribution overheads, etc. Now let's see the classification of cost on the basis of functions. Cost may be classified on the basis of fun business functions like manufacturing, administration, selling and distribution, research and development, etc. Ascertainment of cost for all these functions is necessary and hence they are classified as factory cost, administrative cost, selling and distribution cost and research and development cost. Let's see the first one that is factory cost. Factory cost is also known as works cost. This is the cost which is incurred for the series of operations that is right from the supply of material, labor and expenses incurred till the completion of production. Thus material, labor and expense both direct and indirect constitute product cost. Example material, labor, factory rent, rates and taxes, depreciation on factory building and plant and machinery, factory lighting and power, insurance to factory building, technical director's salary, 
etc. Administrative cost. This is the cost of running a business, that is, for framing the policies, directing and controlling all the activities of the organization, other than manufacturing and selling and distribution expenses. Administrative cost is defined as the sum of the cost of general and management of secretarial, accounting and administrative services, which can be directly, which cannot be directly related with production, marketing, research and development function of the business. For example, audit fees, salaries to office staff, legal expenses, office rent and tax, printing and stationery, etc. Selling and distribution cost. Here we will separately study what is selling cost and then the distribution cost. Selling costs are those costs which are incurred for attracting the potential customers and retaining the existing customers. Thus, demand is created in the market through advertisement and publicity so that new orders can be secured. For example, advertisement, salary and commission to salesmen and sales staff, showroom expenses, cost of free samples, traveling expenses of salesmen, etc. Distribution expenses. These expenses are incurred for dispatching the products which are ready after packing. These expenses include carriage outward, warehouse expenses, packing cost, running and maintenance cost of delivery vans, salary of the warehouse staff, etc. Now let's see the classification of cost on the basis of behavior or variability. On the basis of behavior or variability, costs are classified according to the nature or characteristics in relation to changes in the level of activity or volume of production. On the basis of behavior, cost is classified as follows. Fixed cost, variable cost and semi-variable cost. Let's see what is fixed cost. The cost that remains unchanged in spite of change in volume of production is known as fixed cost. For example, if production is 5000 units per month and manager's salary is rupees 10,000, we cannot express that the salary will be reduced if production falls to 3000 units per month or increases to 6000 units per month. Therefore, fixed cost remains constant over a period of time. It does not change proportionately with change in the volume of production. It is fixed in total but varies per unit of output. This is the figure for fixed cost where on x axis you have volume of output and on y axis you have cost. The line from cost and volume of output is parallel to each other. Let's see variable cost. The cost that varies directly with the volume of production is known as variable cost. If the volume of production increases, the total variable cost also increases. And when volume of production decreases, the total variable cost also decreases. But per unit variable cost remains the same. This is the figure that shows the volume of output and cost at x and y axis and from the point O the variable cost line goes which is exactly between the cost and volume of output. Now let's see semi-variable cost. This cost is also known as semi-fixed cost. Variable cost increases or decreases in the same proportion when volume of production increases or decreases. Fixed cost does not change. Semi-variable cost is partly variable and partly fixed. It is neither perfectly variable nor absolutely fixed in relation to changes in volume of production. It changes in the same direction as volume but not in direct proportion. Example, electricity bill, telephone charges, etc. This is the figure where you can see the semi-variable cost where we have volume of output on x-axis and cost on y. We can see a fixed line cost, fixed cost and from the fixed cost line we can see a line arising in an increasing order that is a semi-variable cost. This is the figure where you can see all the three that is fixed cost, variable cost and semi-variable cost on the same thing. This is the classification of cost on the basis of behavior. I hope you all have understood this session. So till then, bye.